Picture this. You're walking through a bustling Mexican market in Acapulco, the air thick with the scent of grilled seafood and tropical flowers. The Pacific waves crash against the shore just blocks away, but something catches your eye. Certain faces in the crowd have distinctly Asian features. Why the hell do some Mexican people look Asian? Seriously. You've seen it. I've seen it. We've all noticed it. Some Mexicans have distinctly Asian eyes, facial features, even body types that make you do a double take. For decades, people just whispered about it or made uncomfortable jokes. But what if I told you there's an absolutely insane story behind this that involves a mysterious Mexican beach town, genetic time bombs, and a cover-up that lasted 400 years? Scientists just discovered that one-third of people in Acapulco have up to 10% Asian DNA. But here's the mind-bending part. Acapulco sits nearly 1,000 miles from any Asian country. The truth behind how Asian DNA got concentrated in this one Mexican location will completely shatter how you see history. And the secret traces these people left behind in Mexican culture? You encounter them every single day without even knowing it. Juan Esteban Rodriguez never expected to become a genetic detective. The graduate student at Mexico's National Laboratory of Genomics was hunting for something completely different, recent Chinese immigration patterns in northern Mexico. He figured he'd find some genetic breadcrumbs from the 19th century railroad workers who'd built tracks along the US border. Simple research project, predictable results. Instead, he stumbled upon genetic gold that would rewrite four centuries of buried history. His computer screen lit up with data that made absolutely no sense. Sure, some people from northern Mexico showed Asian ancestry, that tracked with the railroad story, but the massive genetic signals weren't coming from the north. They were blazing like genetic flares from southern Mexico, specifically from a beach town called Acapulco. The DNA was pointing to the Philippines and Indonesia, but these weren't recent immigrants. The genetic timestamps told a story that stretched back 13 generations. But why would this one Mexican beach town become the epicenter of genetic mixing that scientists are still trying to understand? Manila Bay, Philippines, 1565 CE. The salt spray stung Captain Miguel Lopez de Legazpi's face as his ships anchored in Manila Bay. Spain had just conquered the Philippines and the conquistador saw dollar signs floating in the tropical air, not gold, something potentially more valuable. A trade route that could connect Asia directly to the Americas across the Pacific Ocean. The Spanish had stumbled onto geographical jackpot, the perfect wind patterns and ocean currents that could carry massive ships between Manila and the Mexican coast. Within months, the Manila galleon trade was born. These weren't ordinary trading vessels. They were floating cities that would cross the world's largest ocean. Each galleon stretched over 150 feet long, packed with precious cargo. Chinese silk, Japanese lacquerware, Indonesian spices, and Philippine pearls. But the ships carried something else, something that Spanish records would deliberately obscure. Human beings, thousands of them. The voyage from Manila to Acapulco took six to nine months of pure ocean survival. Ships battled typhoons, pirates, and the endless blue emptiness of the Pacific. Many vessels never made it, swallowed by storms or captured by English privateers hunting Spanish treasure. But the ones that survived would change Mexico forever. By the way, if you've been enjoying the channel so far, it would mean the world to me if you were to go hit that subscribe button. If you want to hear more interesting genetic stories about our past, this is the place to be. Rodriguez and his advisor, population geneticist Andres Moreno Estrada, stared at the DNA results with growing excitement. Modern genetic technology had become a time machine, reading human history written in the chemical letters of chromosomes. The Asian genetic markers in Acapulco weren't random. They were concentrated, specific, and pointed to a very particular origin, the Philippines and Western Indonesia. They ran advanced local ancestry inference, essentially creating a genetic map that could trace exactly when these Asian genes arrived in Mexico. The results hit like a genetic earthquake 13 generations ago, around 1620 CE, the exact peak of the Manila galleon trade. But wait, 
because what Rodriguez discovered about where these genes came from would shock him to his core. The DNA pointed to people who didn't come to Mexico voluntarily. They were slaves. Filipinos, Malays, Javanese, and others, all labeled simply as chinos by the Spanish colonial system. Men, women, and children were packed into ship hulls like cargo for months-long voyages across the Pacific. Spanish colonial records, when they bothered to keep them, estimated that between 40,000 and 120,000 Asians arrived in colonial Mexico. Compare that to 500,000 Europeans and 250,000 Africans. Yet somehow, the Asian story got completely erased from history books. Why? The massive Manila galleon San Jose limped into Acapulco Harbor after eight months at sea. Its hull was battered, its sails patched with whatever fabric the crew could find. But it had survived another Pacific crossing, and that meant one thing, profit. Spanish merchants rushed to the docks as African and Asian laborers began unloading the precious cargo. Chests of Chinese porcelain clinked against barrels of Indonesian nutmeg. Japanese folding screens wrapped in silk stood next to bundles of Philippine cotton. And among the cargo, blinking in the Mexican sunshine after months below deck, stepped dozens of Asian people who would never see their homelands again. The Spanish had a specific reason for calling all these people chinos. And it wasn't because they were Chinese. It was a legal fiction that allowed the colonial government to justify enslavement. Under Spanish law, certain groups could be enslaved through just war or existing slave systems. Filipinos were particularly vulnerable because Spain controlled the Philippines and could exploit indigenous servitude systems already in place. Many were prisoners of war from Spanish conflicts with Muslim Filipinos in the southern islands. Others were victims of the Portuguese slave trade operating out of Malacca. Still others were enslaved through Spanish raids on Indonesian islands. But once they landed in Acapulco, their individual stories disappeared into the single label, Chino. Spanish records show that nearly every wealthy home in Acapulco had three to 18 Asian slaves. But here's what will blow your mind. These Asian immigrants left secret traces in Mexican culture that you encounter every single day. The sweet smell of fermenting palm sap filled the air as Filipino craftsman Diego Fernandez worked his magic. Fernandez wasn't his real name. Like most Asian slaves, he'd been baptized and given a Spanish Christian name upon arrival. His Filipino name, his family history, his entire identity had been officially erased. Fernandez was teaching Mexican workers how to make tuba, Filipino palm wine, using distillation techniques that had been perfected in Southeast Asia for centuries. The Spanish colonists loved the drink, not realizing they were consuming something fundamentally Asian. That famous Mexican Guayabera shirt you've seen everywhere it might actually be inspired by the Filipino Barong Tagalo. Mexican words like palapa, those palm leaf roof coverings you see at beach resorts, come straight from Tagalog. The method for making mezcal, Filipino distillation techniques brought across the Pacific. Even those beautiful folding screens you see in Mexican colonial art, biombos, were directly inspired by Japanese biobu. Mexican ceramic styles in Puebla started incorporating Asian motifs, phoenixes, peonies, chrysanthemums, pagodas. There's even a Mexican street performance tradition, Pajaritos de la Suerte, where a bird chooses your fortune. It might trace back to Asian divination practices like Japanese omikuji. The craziest part? Most Mexicans have no idea these aren't originally Mexican traditions. The Asian influence got so completely absorbed into Mexican culture that it became invisible. But the genes, the genes remember everything. The legal document was written in formal Spanish, but its implications were revolutionary. Asian barbers in Mexico City were being expelled from the city center and limited to just 12 shops. Why? Because there were over 100 Asian-run barbershops operating without licenses. These weren't recent immigrants. These were established businessmen who'd been in Mexico for decades. Some had started families with local women, others had accumulated enough wealth to buy property and expand their enterprises. The Spanish colonial government was getting nervous about Asian economic success, but the Asians had discovered something brilliant, a legal loophole that would let them escape slavery entirely. 
Under Spanish colonial law, indigenous people couldn't be enslaved. They were considered subjects of the Spanish crown with certain protections. But here's the genius part. Many Asians started claiming they were actually Indios. They argued that they'd been misclassified, that they were indigenous people who'd been wrongly enslaved. Spanish courts actually accepted these claims in many cases. Suddenly, enslaved Filipinos were winning freedom by convincing Spanish judges they were Mexican Indians. It was identity theft on a massive scale, and it worked. Over generations, former Asian slaves and their descendants melted into the general Mexican population. They married indigenous women and mixed-race families. Their children grew up speaking Spanish, practicing Catholicism, and identifying as Mexican. The Asian features remained, but the Asian identity gradually disappeared, except in their DNA. The final DNA analysis results left Rodriguez speechless. The Asian genetic signatures weren't just present in Acapulco. They formed distinct patterns that told the story of survival and adaptation. Today, if you walk along Acapulco's beaches where the Manila galleons once anchored, you're stepping on sand that absorbed four centuries of hidden history. The genetic evidence is written in the faces around you. Asian features that confused observers for generations finally have their explanation. This research proves that Mexico was the world's first truly global melting pot. Native Americans, Europeans, Africans, and Asians all mixed in colonial Mexico centuries before similar diversity appeared anywhere else. Their descendants live throughout Mexico today, carrying DNA that connects them to Filipino fishermen, Indonesian farmers, and Japanese craftsmen who crossed the world's largest ocean 400 years ago. The next time you see a Mexican person with Asian features, you'll know the incredible story behind it. Four centuries of buried history, survival, and resilience that science finally brought to light. Their genetic legacy lives on in millions of people who had no idea they carried the DNA of Asian warriors, craftsmen, and survivors who crossed the world's largest ocean and changed Mexico forever. By the way, if you want to watch more super cool genetic stories, go ahead and check out our video on the dark secrets behind Mexican DNA and the caste system. This was Ancestry Code, and as always, thanks for watching.